Hello fellow Eve nerds. Recently I've been asked to do a video on scanning, both probe scanning and de-scanning. This is going to be specific to wormholes, but you can use the technique for any sort of probe scanning or de-scanning. So let's quickly review the ships and modules and skills necessary for it before we move on to the actual technique. Skills you're going to need are all in your scanning tree here. Specifically, acquisition, pinpointing, range finding, and astrometrics. I would recommend that you get these four, at the very least, before you begin trying to scan things down. The higher these skills are, the easier it'll be, and the less time it's going to take to scan things. You can still do it at three, but take it to four pretty quick. As far as ships go, you can put scanning modules on any ship. However, there are ships that have specific bonuses to scanning. Every race has a Tech 1 frigate that has a bonus to scanning. We can lift those up here a second quickly. Scan the frigate. So, the Mars is the Magnate. Bonus to core and combat scan probes. Dari is the Huron, or Heron. Galente is the Imicus. Mimitar, the Probe. There are Tech 2 variants of these, but I'm guessing since you're watching in scanning video and explaining the basics of scanning, you don't quite have the skills yet in Tech 2, so we're not going to get into that. When you are ready, just know there are Tech 2 scanning ships that have even better bonuses. As far as modules go, there are a number of modules that you're going to need. The most important of them being your scan probe launcher. Now there are two different kinds of scan probe launchers. There is the core probe launcher and the expanded probe launcher. The expanded probe launcher's requirements are considerably higher, specifically CPU. Uh, however, the core probe launcher can only launch core probes, so scanning for anomalies out in space. Cosmic signatures, sorry. Scanning for cosmic signatures out in space. Where an expanded probe launcher can also use combat probes. Combat probes can be used to scan down ships and deployable objects. Uh, for example, mobile tractor units or uh, or mobile depots. For the most part, if you're scanning to locate sites to run or to find wormholes, you really only need a core probe launcher. So I recommend starting out with that and searching for signatures. There are also modules that will help improve the performance of your uh, probe launchers. Scan acquisition arrays, pinpointing arrays, and range finding arrays. The descriptions explain what they are. Um, the acquisition array reduces the time it takes to scan. Important if you are trying to combat probe, not as important if you're trying to probe down cosmic signatures. The pinpointing array reduces the deviation, and the range finding array increases the strength. Those two tend to be more important when trying to find signatures. So we've talked a bit about the ships, we've talked a bit about the modules. The fittings can be quite simple. I'm in the Tech 2 Amar, um, scanning ship, the Anathema. But your fitting for your Tech 1 ship would be relatively similar. You would have your probe launcher with your probes. I am using the Sisters probe launcher as it gives me a bit of a, bo bit of a boost in the uh, sensor strength, as well as the Sisters probes. I have my pinpointing array, range finding array, and acquisition array. I use all three because I do use this for combat scanning. And there's also rigs, the gravity capacitor, gravity capacitor upgrades, 
which also increase your scan strength. Most scanning ships are just going to be used for scanning, though some may also be used for um, relic analyzation, hacking, that kind of stuff. I don't do any of that. This is a scanning video. It's for scanning. So my scanning ships are fit for scanning period. So we've got a ship, we've got equipment, we've got rigs. Now we don't have to go have to go out and scan. So how do we do that? Well, starting from the beginning, let me close all my tabs here a second. Your screen probably looks something like this. You've got local up, looking out at the vast emptiness of space. You're gonna to need to get your probe launcher window up. You click on scanners down here and then probe scanner. You could also the default hotkey of Alt key pull it up. In addition to that, I like to have my directional scanner up as well. Now, if it's your first time opening this up, then it's going to look a lot like this, where you've got your map and it comes up something like this. While this is effective, most of the time you're going to be scanning things like wormholes, where you need to be able to see what's happening. You need to be able to see your overview. You need to be able to see if somebody's talking in local for some terrible reason. So having the entirety of your screen blocked is disadvantageous. To fix this, you can come up here and click this little square. You can change to floating. That minimizes this. And to pull this out, click that little square there, and it puts it in a separate window. Now you can move this around, make it whatever size you want to fit your needs. This is a map of the solar system you're currently in. If you already have this window, but you don't see that map, you can click this tiny icon right here, and it'll open that up. You can zoom in out of the map using the mouse wheel, and you can double click in the map to change your orientation. You can also use these two buttons here to change your orientation. You can spin the map around in any which direction that suits you, but I prefer to start out with this top view like this, where you can see the whole solar system, I like to zoom out to where I can see all of it. So, here in our probe scanner window, you want to make sure that you have cosmic signatures checked. You don't need anomalies right now or anything else. We are scanning for signatures. In my case, I'm scanning for wormholes. But you might be scanning for combat sites within wormholes or low sec or null sec. So, all those things will show up here under cosmic signatures. Want to make sure you've got your core probes loaded and go ahead and fire them out. It's only going to fire eight at a time. No sense in trying to fire more. The default formation of pinpoint formation is the one that I always use. I haven't used any of these in years. In my opinion, they're not terribly necessary. You will see that on the map, it put this little box here with these arrows. These are where your probes are located. The center of the box is the center of your pinpoint formation. I like to arrange mine so that the arrows are northeast southwest aligned, and you'll see why here in a second. Now you can move this box around by grabbing one of the arrows and shifting it this way, or the corner arrow shifting this way, or you can grab the box itself and go in all directions. The first thing you want to do is center it over one of your signatures. Let's begin with this one here. I'm just picking it at random. You can either click on the signature here to center your screen, or you can double click on it here. Center it in your screen. Either way, it's important to center it in your screen. It makes things a lot easier. Now, zoom in a bit using your mouse wheel and position your scanners directly in the middle of that little X. Okay. Now let's zoom in to make sure this is pretty well in the center and take that most little screen here. Double click on the window to change the orientation and now center it this way as well. So now it's centered in both directions. If you see a signature like this that has a faint red circle around it, a filled in faint red circle, that means that this signature is actually located somewhere in that circle. It's not located at the X, it's just located somewhere in that circle. To find it, you need to make sure you're scanning the entirety of this red circle. If I had scanned now, since my probes aren't encompassing that circle, there's a good chance I'll get a poor signal or a miss. So I'm going to increase my probe size, to, in this case, 8 AU, and now you can see that red circle is engulfed in my probes. 
So let's hit analyze. What's going to happen when you hit analyze is your probes are going to fly from wherever they were alongside your ship here over to there. And as soon as they reach there, it's going to begin the scan. The scan's going to sweep. The signal's going to go up from zero. And you can see the X was here. And now it's down here, meaning that this is a more accurate location of where it really is. So double click on it here or single click here to center this on your screen. Put your probes right in the middle again. And now we need to lower the probe size, increase the accuracy. Since you're likely new at this, you're going to want to go down by one tick. We went from four, or, or sorry, went from eight down to four. Hit analyze again. Right now we're at 5.5. The probe is going to warp to a new position. It's going to begin a scan. Now our signal strength is increased. You can see it moved again a little bit. So I'm going to double click on it. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to recenter our probes. We're going to go down another tick. Hit analyze. And if you hear my fish tank tinkling in the background, please excuse me. I'm not peeing for 45 minutes. When we get it down to a certain point, it will identify what it is. In this case, the data site. Our signal strength is only 42%. And you can't warp to it until your signal strength is 100%. So, if this data site is something you're interested in, you would want to continue to scan it down until it's 100%. Let's go ahead and do that just for the process. It's really just repeating what we've been doing so far. Double click on it to center it. Put your probes over the center of it. Zoom in a bit. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but does make it be easier. Go down one more tick, analyze again. Each time the signal increases and the scan gets more accurate. Okay, it's yellow, we're getting closer, we're at 85%. Center again, send your probes over it, put on a tick, hit analyze. Okay, so it's now at 100%, and we know that because we see this little arrow that allows us to warp to it. We can go ahead and click that arrow. Our ship will warp to the site, and we could do whatever it is we intended on doing there. It might be a data site, it might be a combat site, it might be a wormhole, whatever it is. The process for scanning them is the same. As your skills get better, not only your abilities, but your character skills, you can start skipping ticks. So you might start off at eight, and then go down to four or two with the next scan because your scan is stronger, more accurate, faster, that sort of thing. Let's check next door and see if we can find another one. Warp drive active. This button here will pull your probes in. However, if you warp out or leave system, it'll automatically pull them in. It is a good practice to get into to pull them back in manually. Okay. Here we are, new system. I'm gonna zoom out so I can do the whole system. I see three signals here, three signatures. I'm gonna decloak, start moving in a direction, launch my probes. So. Just like last time, I'm going to pick a signature and start working on it. Let's see this one. I click on it to center it in my screen. Move my probes over it. Double click on the screen. Make sure it's centered here. And then now, because it's got this faint red circle, I need my probes to engulf that circle. It looks like four AU is enough to engulf it. So I don't, know, don't need to go any bigger. Hit analyze. Probes are going to warp from my overview here to there and begin scanning. Oh, and look at that. I happen to get it in one. So, this is a combat site. I can warp directly there, and if that was my goal to do combat sites, just begin doing it. Let's check these two. Center it by clicking on it. Center it on top. Center it on the side. Check once more. 
Now, again, I need my probes to engulf the circle. So eight looks to do it. Analyze. Sometimes you'll see signatures that don't have um, the big red circle. You can see that by, hold on a second, move this. By scanning it, we still see this big red, big red circle, but now on this one, it's just a small circle with a bigger circle around it. No big red. Okay. That means that you've got it to a point where you don't need to be this big anymore. So center it on your dot. And instead of going to four, you could try two. If you have a problem at two, that's fine. Do four. But so, if, but if you can skip steps like that, it'll save you a lot of time in the long run. Okay, data site. We know what kind of site it is. We know if we're interested in continuing scanning or not. Because this is just a scanning tutorial, I'm going to scan it down to its fullest to continue to show the process. So we got it to this point. Once again, center, zoom in, center, double click, center, bring it down, analyze. Okay, not quite 100% yet, so we'll do it again. Center it, zoom in, center probes, center probes, down a tick, analyze. Now I've got it at 100%, and we can warp right to it. Let's do the last one here in the system. I'm going to zoom out, double click to get vertical view again, and I'm going to click on this to center it, center my probes, center my probes. I need them to engulf the circle, so I've got to make it bigger. There we go. That engulfs the circle. Analyze. Okay, I'm glad we got one of these. Call this a split signature. It means that your probes don't know where it is, and you end up with two. Sometimes you'll get like ten of these in a row, and they're incredibly annoying. Here's why. It could be either one of these. So I just pick one. There's no rhyme or reason. Just pick one. Oops. Send your probes on that one. And then shrink your probes with only selecting one. And hit Analyze. <clears throat> For whatever reason, it's always the second one. Yeah, see, I don't know why. i never lucky enough to have it do the first one. So click to center the second one. Move your probes up. Double click in space. Probes up. Verify. Analyze. Okay, there we go. So now we know it's this one. Now we just repeat the process again. Zoom in a bit. Center. Center. Down a tick. Analyze. Okay, we know what kind of site it is now. We can decide if we want to continue. What we do? Center. Center the probes. Center the probes. Zoom in. Down a tick. Analyze. Test out going down one tick versus two ticks sometimes. You'll figure out what your ship, your skills, etc. are capable of. So, not 100% yet. Zoom in. Center. Center. Down a tick. Analyze. And there we go. I've got it to 100%. All probe scanning is, is repeating this process over and over and over, uncovering what each of the signatures are in your particular system. It's not exciting, it's very repetitious, but it is a necessary skill to have if you're going to live somewhere like null or wormhole space. The useful skill to have if you're going to live anywhere else. Let's take a quick look at D-scanning and combat probing.
I'm gonna pull these in. I'm throw my combat probes on. Right now we're in. You know, let's go over to Ania. Where there's a bunch of mission runners, and we can simulate trying to descan down a mission runner or someone in space that isn't at a signature. All right, Anya's got 23 people in it right now. There's bound to be somebody doing a mission somewhere. And we have a Tengu. Let's do this. I want to find somebody running. Oh, this is a big system. Somebody running a mission. Alright, we've got a Chronos on D-Scan. We've also got this lovely mobile tractor unit. And a Praxis. And these tractor units. Okay, these guys have got to be doing a mission somewhere. We've got these MTUs out, Dominics. Let's look for this Dominics here. Let's say we're in a wormhole, we see them out running stuff, we want to track them down. So we're going to be cloaked up, because we don't want anybody to see us. And we don't want to launch probes yet, because if they're watching D-Scan, they'll be able to see our probes. So first we have to figure out at what range they're currently. So what I like to do is you can hit V to scan. Oh, I'm sorry. To pull up your D scanner, click on scanners and then directional scanner. That'll pull up your D scanner window. You can also do Alt D. So here you can see whatever is in the system matching your current filter. I like to leave mine at active overview filters, which means whatever filter I have active up here. On my filter, I can see ships, mobile tracked units, and a few other things. So, we want to find this Dominix. We know that he's currently within 14.3 AU, which is this green circle here. That's everything we can see in 14.3 AUs. we got to get it down closer to the actual ship to find him. All right, so, first we're going to start lowering the range. Cut it down by one tick by hovering over this and mouse wheeling down and then hit scan again, we still see them. Go from 10 to five, we lose them. So he's somewhere between five and 10 AU away. So in range, I like to cut it in half, seven and a half. Okay, we get him back. Let's go down to seven. So there at seven, six and a half. We lose him at six and a half, somewhere between six and a half and seven. 6.7, and I'm, I'm tapping V to scan. And 6.9. Seven. Okay. So we know he's between 6.9 and 7 AU away. Fantastic. He's somewhere on the outskirts of the circle. I have to figure out where. I'm going to click on this little you are here icon to center this on my screen. Then I'm going to zoom in. So the circle fills up almost all of my window here. So I'm going to cut this from 360 degrees down to 180. Okay. We currently lost him. Now this circle shows the direction our ship or our camera out here is facing. Um, if we want to move this, we need to move where our camera's facing. So we know he's 180 degrees off where we were. We're just going to turn it around like this and scan again. Okay, now we see him out there. Great. Now I like to scan or to center my window here and then zoom in so it takes up pretty much the whole window. The reason to do that is this. We're going to lower this angle down, and we lost him. Okay, but now we know it's got to be within this window somewhere. So we can move it up, over. Oh, okay. We pick him up this way. So again, let's center this, zoom in so it's about as big as the window, and go down by one more tick. Okay, we've still got him at sixty. Zoom in again. 
Okay, we got another tick. We lost them at 30, so we know it's got to be within this window here. I'm moving it around and I'm tapping V on my keyboard to scan as I move. Okay, we've got them over here now. Great. Center it again. Zoom in a bit. Take it down to 15. Okay, we know it's over here somewhere. Okay, it's right over here. So now, if we zoom out a bit, we know that his ship is right on the edge of this somewhere. You can go down to five, but I found it's not necessary. What you can do is quickly decloak, launch your combat probes. You want to put them right on the edge of your circle. Okay. Because you know his ship's right there. Then you want to cloak up again as soon as you can. Set it to something to fill that circle. Make sure you have ships selected and hit analyze. We can check D scan again to make sure he hasn't moved. And he hasn't. He's still there. Now we should see is a Dominix. And we're going to pull our probes in quick. If they're in null sec or wormhole space, they're going to be watching D-Scan, so you don't want your probes on D-Scan for any longer than they have to be. That's why you locate them using D-Scan first before you launch your probes. Okay, so now I located him in one scan, because we knew exactly where it was anyways. We're warping out to him, and boom, there he is. Now he must have hit uh, a micro jump drive when he saw the scan probes, because now he's exactly 100k away from where he was a second ago. But that doesn't matter. The point is, we were able to descan him down to exactly where he was. We warped right on top of his previous location. You can see his MTUs right here. This is where he was. You can tell that. And now you could begin combat if that's what you're going for. So descanning is a matter of using your system map and your directional scanner to get as close as you can to someone. It's important to have things like anomalies up because a lot of times in null sec and in wormholes, people will be running anomalies. You don't have to use your um, combat probes. You can scan them down to a specific anomaly. You'll see that that 0.1 AU, as we're lowering the distance, is right on the air. One of these anomalies is right on the edge. And then you can narrow it down and focus on that one anomaly. It's easy to spot them at that point. So, uh, let me show you one more thing here before I do that. One more thing. Leave this dude's mission here. Hmm. All right. Let's leave this dude's mission. And I just want to show you what that looks like when you're descanning. Let's so say, for instance, you were trying to find somebody, and they, they showed up on descan... Get back to 100. Okay. So, you see a whole bunch of stuff here. And with cosmic signatures and anomalies selected here, we're able to see these little guys. In this case, the Serpentus Hideaway. Sorry, the Serpentus Refuge. Uh, yeah. So, if we saw somebody on D scan and we were somewhere like Nullsec, or wormhole space, and they were in a combat ship, it'd be safe to assume they're probably at this thing. But to make sure, what you can do is, you can lower this down. So it's, it's like a little tiny circle around it, so you know it's still within your big green circle. Lower it down until it's out of the circle. If you were to lose them, you can see this is no longer highlighted. You can bring it back and start bringing it down to where, there we go, so within one AU of that. Oh, and actually, there is somebody out there. Okay, so look at the Stratios here. It's called Gas. Stratios. See how this site is currently highlighted? You can see a little faint circle around it. When we go down one, it loses that highlight, and we lose that Stratios. We can safely guess that Stratios is there. To make sure, bring it back up to where you got this selected. Lower this down as low as it'll go. Hold V, like Victor, and click on this. It'll focus right on that site, and you see the Stratios reappears. 
Now we can almost guarantee he's there. We haven't had to launch probes at all. And we can warp over and verify. Active. Let's do that. This radius is still here. If we lower our range way down, we can still see him. And there he is. We didn't have to decloak. We didn't have to use probes. If they didn't see us come into the system, they have no idea we're here watching them. So it's important to try and descan everything down first if you see a, a, a shipping system before you pop probes. By doing so, you can get right on top of them before they know you're anywhere near. I hope this has been somewhat useful to you. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. Otherwise, uh, fly safe or don't. Have fun. It's just a game.